Platinum Games is a developer name that many people know comes with an impressive stable of action games. Whether through Bayonetta, Nier Automata, and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, equally impressive action titles. But Platinum Games wouldn't just be satisfied with dominating the single player action space. They would go online with their title that came out in 2022, Babylon's Fall, developed by Platinum Games and published by Square Enix. Despite having the experienced repertoire, Platinum Games would have a dud with Babylon's Fall, whereupon launch the game would peak at 1166 players. What went wrong with their first true attempt at an online game? And how did Babylon's Fall launch to a resounding quiet, where it struggled to exit the shadow cast by name alone since? Detectives, on this episode of Death of a Game, we cover Platinum Games, and how even action game royalty can miss sometimes. Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome our sponsor for this video, it's Geology. Geology is a nine-time award-winning men's skincare product recognized in the Men's Health, Esquire, and Ask Men Grooming Awards, with 5,000 plus five-star reviews. Geology creates a simple, effective skincare routine customized just for you. You just click the link provided and fill out a 30-second diagnostic quiz with, in just a few clicks, you tell them about your skin goals, and then a team of dermatologists will design a regimen just for you to be shipped directly to your door. It's that simple. This skincare routine helps you fight acne, reduce oiliness, prevent wrinkles, combat dark or puffy under eyes. As somebody with chronic dark under eyes and dry skin, I really enjoy Geology's skincare product because it helps me feel refreshed in the morning and at night. And not only feels fresh, it smells fresh too. Head to geology.com, that's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E.com and take the free skincare quiz to save up to 50% off on your 30 day trial. Even better, join their Geology Galaxy community for more daily tips, giveaways, and more at discord.gg geology. Thanks again to Geology for sponsoring today's video, and back to the mystery detectives. Founded back in the fall of 2007, Platinum Games is a developer synonymous with action games founded in Osaka, Japan, behind big names like Bayonetta, Nier Automata, and the Wonderful series. Platinum Games would also handle the MGS franchise with Revengeance, a quite successful title in its own right, proving to be rather relevant in our case study as the director, Kenji Saito, would also be in charge of Platinum Games' next title. That title would be announced sometime in the summer of 2018, Babylon's Fall, from the creators of Bayonetta and the director Kenji Saito himself. Babylon's Fall, contrary to popular belief, was always conceived as a games-as-a-service multiplayer game. Details released were pretty scarce at the time, with the trailer seemingly focusing on a battle between two armored beings and a historical timeline. Platinum Games would spin an entirely new studio just to develop live service games for consoles in Tokyo. This would mean that it wouldn't be the entirely core Platinum Games team working on Babylon's Fall, but they had enough of the same moving pieces to surely make things work. The big gameplay and detail reveal for Babylon's Fall would hit June 2021 at E3. Platinum Games was purporting the game to be near Automata that never ends, which was quite the marketing. During this time, it would come out that publicly, Babylon's Fall would be a departure from single-player-only games for Platinum Games and would be a multiplayer cooperative title. While this might not seem like a negative thing as traditionally games that go online still have some sort of single-player offering, but the issue with Babylon's Fall was it was a live service game which meant it would always require online play in order to be played, even offline. Live service full-priced always online multiplayer game meant that Babylon's Fall was going to be quite expensive, with a box price, season pass, and a possible battle pass. BF could cost well over $80. Kenji Saito, lead director on the project, would detail more about the title in an interview at E3. On top of capturing the iconic Platinum Games worthy combat, Saito would state that our goal was to create a deeply layered, high quality fantasy world rendered in the oil painting style seen in classic sword and sorcery fantasy works. This visual style would prove quite eye catching, as even in the early footage of Babylon's Fall, the game would indeed play much like an oil painting in motion. Did you guys ever spend way too much time in school on a particular subject and you suddenly find use of it and you're just really excited to use it? 
Well, because that just happened with me and my art experience, including art history as well. Oil paintings are gorgeous, I quite enjoy them. It's hard to imagine much clarity in a video game that chooses an oil painting as an art style though, because oil paintings, while they provide rich and dense colors, as well as the ability to range from dark to light, that's kind of where the advantage is in. Because this advantage when you have 30 plus frames per second moving, and you can just imagine intuitively that the clarity will start to fade quickly. Not that there isn't a way to do it, and it makes sense, like Valheim comes to mind, and I'm sure that the comments are mentioning more examples of this now, but these aren't really action games. Not the Platinum Games level of expectation. Platinum Games choosing a striking visual style was respectable, but doing such an online, fast-paced action game was puzzling to say the least. There was a way to find a happy medium, but it would prove to be an uphill battle. Babylon's Fall would have the first beta set in Japan, July 29th, with one to follow in America August 5th, and finally the 12th of August for Europe. During each of these betas, the game would be only accessible for four hours, but the beta would expand eventually into three phases, offering more play. Throughout the numerous limited playtest sessions, the feedback was a resounding echo to tune the visuals in Babylon's Fall. Platinum Games would answer this October 7th, 2021, after they would tweak the visuals following a wave of negative feedback. This would greatly improve the visual clarity and solve the visual issues for many players. For others, the game was still weirdly legible, and that was a constant negative for some players. It should also be noted that the limited playtimes being offered screams a developer not super confident in the content lasting or the game offering in general. Impressions concerning Babylon's Fall weren't bad. They were just pretty lukewarm considering the Platinum Games name that was attached to it. The visual improvements had helped things, according to PC Games N, and the combat overall for the game was serviceable despite other reports of it being clunky. With little to no story featured in the beta, however, the overall impression for the reviewer was a total lack of excitement. With the narrative painfully missing in Babylon's Fall, the game was just feeling like it was missing something. Or a few things. All we really knew is that you played as some sort of sentinel that had four weapons that could follow you around and you could equip them as one, and that was kind of the crux. The combat in the four-weapon gimmick alone wasn't good enough to warrant a full price tag, especially given the gas tag that was attached to that. Where was the iconic Platinum Games experience after all? Meanwhile, throughout the lukewarm beta impressions and deafening quiet of a reception, it was coming out that Babylon's Fall was featuring literal Final Fantasy XIV assets, which wasn't a good look on top of things. Platinum Games' response was simply, We apologize for any concerns this caused, which didn't really do much to alleviate anything. Was Babylon's Fall a true full Platinum Games title? Why was the response surrounding it so poor? With borrowed assets from Final Fantasy XIV, a less than stellar combat system, a departure from single player only, and a lackluster narrative, Babylon's Fall was shaping up to be quite the flop, and it felt like there was no shot in the game getting delayed at this point either, making Babylon's Fall, fall, predetermined. Okay, you guys know I had to do it and I waited quite a while, so you gotta give me some kind of credit. Also, I'm sick. Um, I don't know how that affects that, but... Babylon's Fall would launch on PC, PS5, and PS4 early access for those who would pre-order February 28th, 2022, and within a few days later would follow that with an official launch March 3rd, 2022. The critical reception would match the critical reception given during the beta phase. Not very impressive, scoring a 40 on both PC and PS5 out of 100 on aggregate review website Metacritic. On Steam, Babylon's Fall would score a 46% mixed review score, from only 263 players. Which the player count alone there should alarm you, but we'll get back to that in a second. In IGN's 4 out of 10 review, they would state that Babylon's Fall isn't a broken action RPG, but it isn't a good one either, and it's one of the ugliest games in several console generations. That wasn't the worst of it either. They would go on to further state that BF feels like the generic store brand of a more famous game that came before which translates to just painfully generic. In PC Gamer's 45 out of 100 review, they would state that Babylon's Fall, while it feels far removed from the highly polished Bayonetta and Nier Automata, in every other aspect, the combat still holds Platinum's flair. Even with the combat being positively received though, there's an overarching sense of a game that feels unfinished, with life service elements like battle passes and premium accessories taking priority over variety, meaningful progression, and ultimately player enjoyment. Remove these aspects and PC Gamer thought that there was enough of a core quality game there. But that wasn't what players were getting. They were getting a games as a service with a season pass, battle pass, and microtransactions and skins on top of it. 
Babylon's Fall had almost every monetization strategy imaginable, and nothing to show for it to the fans other than that. Oh, yeah, the story. I've been avoiding explaining it because it feels just so damn boring. The Babylonians perish and leave their great tower the ziggurat remaining. The Tower of Babel must be climbed for fabled treasures and secrets and so on and so forth. You as the Sentinel must team up with three other players and take on the tower. I'm not kidding. That's non-ironically the story. They just describe a looter shooter game and just throw a few Babylonians in for good measure. <laughs> but wait, it gets worse for Babylon's Fall. It happened to launch the same day on Early Access as a game you guys have probably heard of, Elden Ring. You know the other Japanese action game made by the other Japanese action game royalty developers from software? The same one that sold 13 million copies in the first month and even managed to outsell Call of Duty? Yes, that Elden Ring. Well, I don't know how exactly Platinum Games missed the memo there, <laughs> when everyone else didn't, but why did they think it was a good idea to go up against one of their fiercest competitors, who just teamed up with the writer of Game of Thrones and the creator of Dark Souls? We have the gift of hindsight, sure, to know how terribly that went, but they had to have some sort of inkling even back then, especially when From Software was projecting to sell 4 million copies in the first month alone. Sure, everyone can have crazy projections, but these are clearly realistic and were very low in the end. There's very little chance that Babylon's Fall development time, effort, and budget were anything close to Elden Ring, and the differences were quite stark. So probably don't launch them on the same day. On release day, Babylon's Fall would peak at fewer than 650 concurrent players according to Steam and 1,200 peak players. For a game that required you to be online to play it, these were pathetically low numbers, especially for the stature and reputation that Platinum Games had. Despite the disastrous launch as it was being dubbed, Platinum Games was dedicated to making Babylon's Fall a better experience and was asking for player feedback. Platinum, despite having a poor reception for their recent game, would also state that they had no plans to stop development on the game. Platinum would then release a playable demo on Steam March 25th, 2022 in an effort to increase the player count and draw up more interest. Platinum Games would then dig even deeper with just a few days later utilizing a Nier Automata crossover that would then allow players to utilize new cosmetics and campaign quests that were Nier themed. These big changes didn't even move the needle for the struggling multiplayer game, however, with by the end of April peak player counts in the 300s and the average players under 100 players. Big changes and a fairly large discount were going to be needed to get players playing the online only action game from Platinum Games. Season 2 Light of Aru update would launch May 31st, 2022 and add 80 new quests, a new faction, a new weapon type, and additional story content. The update injected much needed content into the game, but the problem is it felt like this content should have been included in the game in the first place, especially with such little content offered at the end game in particular at launch, which basically only featured reskinned and rebalanced single-player dungeons and story missions. This reminds me of another game we just covered on this series as well, Godfall. I guess gods in ancient civilizations spend a lot of time falling. <laughs> you can tell there's a content drought too bad to satisfy when upon new content being introduced, the needle in the player base really doesn't even move. By the end of June 2022, Babylon's Fall had dropped to 67 peak players, and an average of 16 players, not even enough players to fill lobbies in the given regions that the game was playable in. By the end of summer 2022, the population isn't getting any better for Babylon's Fall. I mean, the game's only got a total of five patches, and some of these patches are so small and insignificant, they literally have one line of nondescript text. I, I can't make this up. So it's hard to improve much from what you put out at launch and self-described as a disastrous launch when you're putting out such few changes. While Platinum Games hasn't abandoned Babylon's Fall just yet, there's little chance at this point that the game will be making a significant comeback with a poor initial reception and very little resources dedicated to turning that around. That means that already so soon after the launch of the game, the fate is all but decided. At least, that's how I feel, and feel so strongly about it so early in this video, I feel ready to gather the combined clues and evidence thus far, and do a final deduction concerning the largest contributing factors for the death of a game, Babylon's Fall. So hit the music, Tom, let's put this case to rest. A full price game with a cash shop and a battle pass. It's like the monetization trifecta. 
more an unclear visual presentation. Always online games as a service, which means money over content. Got Elden Ringed. A large departure from a single player Platinum Games title. Platinum Games won't lose too much steam coming off the failure of Babylon's Fall, with Bayonetta 3 just on the horizon. After all, the majority of their game audience is single player, and likely awaiting the new release. That ends up making Babylon's Fall feel totally non-consequential. Its failure in itself won't do much harm to Platinum Games, or their future titles, other than maybe give them more hesitancy to make multiplayer titles, which in the end, that's kind of exactly what the fanbase wanted anyway. Thanks for watching, detectives. Welcome.